This is enhancing student participation and understanding of statistical analysis in remote undergraduate STEM courses. We're going to begin by introducing the overall picture of this project. Due to the unexpected circumstances created by the COVID-19 pandemic, the education system has transitioned to a completely remote format. Such a format has been proven to hinder student learning, which has been supported by Onyema's study, Impact of the Coronavirus Pandemic on Education. The sudden transition highlighted the issue that students, especially those in STEM, lack an understanding of statistical analysis. With the transition to remote learning, in-person labs greatly contributing to student statistical analysis learning were no longer an option. And as statistical analysis skills are already lacking in K-12 and undergraduate students, a new learning process that focuses on teaching statistical analysis and a remote laboratory element must be established. And moving on to our methodology section. The initial step is to allow students to gain a foundation of statistical analysis and why it is crucially important in STEM. This is done so by developing STEM-based education modules concentrated on breaking down the major components of statistics, whether that be how to interpret and analyze data or how to perform chi chi-square and ANOVA tests utilizing a variety of learning platforms. In addition, students are encouraged to participate in discussion boards to foster both their soft skills and their research skills, such as critical thinking, problem solving, and communication. The next step is to promote application. Using their novel knowledge and skills, students are provided with opportunities to demonstrate their understanding of statistical analysis in a series of interactive modules and reflective assessments. And although it is not mandatory, students are highly encouraged to partake in original research and disseminate their analyzed findings at a research conference or through official publications. Of course, in order to do so, students must exhibit proficient levels of performing statistical analysis. Now we're going to discuss one of our graphing platforms, Data Classroom. Data Classroom is a graphing program that allows students to successfully learn how to perform statistical analysis and its significance, especially environments in the scientific and research world. Data Classroom not only provides streamlined methods for performing a multitude of statistical tests, such as T, ANOVA, and chi-squared tests, but it also enables students to create detailed graphical representations to facilitate their learning process even further. In addition, by incorporating Data Classroom in Canvas modules, students are given opportunities to practice their data analytical skills that supplement their professor's conventional lectures. And this is the Data Classroom module. It provides a full introduction, including key definitions and video tutorials. And throughout the module, students will be utilizing Data Classroom to perform a series of statistical-based labs, such as a glassware dry lab. We will now move on to the modules we created to teach the students statistical analysis skills. Before the students started the modules, they were given a survey to complete that asked some questions about how familiar they were with certain statistical analysis skills and the standard curve. After they took the survey, the students took a statistical analysis assessment to establish a baseline of student knowledge before starting the modules. As the students progressed through the module, they participated in many discussion boards so that they could mimic a scientific forum, and they completed many assignments and quizzes to track their progress. After the students completed the modules, they were given the same survey and graphing assessment to assess post-module student retention, statistical analysis skills, and graphing skills. The Food Lab teaches the difference between precision and accuracy in a hands-on setting, giving students a way to apply the statistical analysis skills that they learned in the previous module. In this lab, students worked in groups and were instructed to develop a procedure where they chose a food and drink to weigh using three different weighing methods to see which method gave the closest measurement to the advertised weight on the packaging. After the students completed their procedure, they were instructed to graph their results in Excel and Data Classroom and to write a lab report on their findings. This lab taught students how to apply statistical analysis skills to real problems, how to develop a proper lab procedure, and how to determine the difference between precision and accuracy when it comes to lab results. The standard curve module wasn't a part of the original set of modules to teach students statistical analysis skills, but after a group of students in a general chemistry course at Pasadena City College completed these modules, we noticed a distinct lack in understanding of the standard curve. Because of this, we decided to create a separate module that specifically focused on teaching the standard curve. 
To teach a standard curve, we made a definitions page that defined what a standard curve is and any terms that may be associated with a standard curve. We also gave the students five informational videos that taught them how to graph standard curves in Excel and Data Classroom. Students were given several assignments and labs to give the students practice creating standard curves and to evaluate their progress within the module. The two key labs were the Solon Painting Mystery Lab and the Drink of Choice Lab, both of which gave them practice utilizing a standard curve. The Stolen Painting Mystery Lab requires students to graph multiple standard curves and compare them to each other, while the Drink of Choice Lab required students to graph one standard curve and determine an unknown value. The Drink of Choice Lab also had a hands-on element to increase student engagement. At the end of each lab throughout the module, we had students participate in discussion boards so that they could learn from their peers. Before students began working through their assigned modules, they were given a pre-modular assessment to gauge their existing statistical analysis knowledge. Topics on this seven question assessment range from calculating the mean of a data set to performing an ANOVA test, which typically is considered to be a more advanced statistical analysis test. This graph depicts students' average score out of five on the pre-modular assessment and shows that students have a much stronger understanding of primarily entry level statistical analysis tests, but lack a solid foundation in more advanced statistical analysis tests of increasing difficulty as expected. Several weeks after having completed the assigned modules, students were given the same assessment that they took prior to the beginning of the modules. The data collected from these 35 responses showed a significant improvement in their scores, particularly in questions two, three, and six. Considering this was the very first piloting of the modular learning system employed in a classroom setting, we can confidently conclude that it helps students gain a greater understanding of calculating standard deviations, the definition of standard deviation, and calculating chi-square, T, and ANOVA tests which are definitely topics that students will need familiarity with moving forward in their STEM undergraduate careers. This bar chart depicts the data of the pre-modular assessment in dark blue and the post-modular assessment in a contrasting light blue. The error bars seem to show that there was a significant improvement, particularly in questions two, three, and six, as mentioned before and a noticeable improvement in the scores of every other question pertaining to statistical analysis topics. Except for question one, which question one asked the students to calculate the mean of a data set, and they did consistently well on that one. For all seven questions, we performed a matched paired t-test to determine whether or not the null hypothesis could be rejected. For questions two, three, and six, which showed the most improvement on the previous graph, the p-values are nearly zero, so we can indeed reject the null hypothesis and taking the results of the matched pair t-test for the remaining four questions into account, we could mathematically conclude that the mean of the post-assessment overall was in fact higher than that of the pre-assessment. In other words, there was significant improvement in the student's statistical analysis skills throughout the course of this module, which has been shown and reflected in the assessment questions. Moving on to future applications. As a skilled technical workforce becomes increasingly reliant on technology, a basic understanding of the programming language Python is also extremely beneficial for students as it allows them to develop computational thinking, thereby strengthening their problem solving, planning, and procedural thinking skills. A Python-based statistical analysis module using Google Colab and Jupyter Notebook is currently being developed for that reason and will be implemented in fall of 2021. Once a basic foundation in Python has been developed, creating graphs in Google Colab or Jupyter Notebook is oftentimes even simpler than creating the same graph in Excel or Data Classroom. We certainly had an easier time creating our graphs with Python for this presentation. Thus far, the Python module includes an introduction to Python lesson with graphing samples, a survey, and a definitions page. Students will then proceed to lessons focused specifically on calculating standard deviation in Python and creating line graphs, swarm plots, and box and whisker plots. While this module is still in its early stages, once completed, uploaded to NanoHub, and implemented into the classroom, students will develop both their statistical analysis and computational thinking simultaneously, becoming more multidimensional candidates for the STEM workforce. NanoHub is an online platform introduced to Pasadena City College through an existing partnership with undergraduate research faculty at Purdue University. Anything pertaining to this project, including, but not limited to, Jupyter Notebook files, datasets, and Google Colab sheets, 
and video files as well can be uploaded to NanoHubs. So this educational research study can be carried on even after this team has transferred to their respective four-year institutions. Ultimately, uploading Canvas modules with Data Classroom and Python features to NanoHub will allow professors to easily utilize the free software, online programs, and course material that can improve statistical analysis and coding skills for prospective STEM students. This semester, we are currently implementing the Data Classroom and Standard Curve modules in one section of the General Chemistry and Chemical Analysis 2 course and one section of the General Organic and Biochemistry course offered at Pasadena City College. Once the modules have been completed, our team will spend the remainder of the semester and summer session organizing and analyzing the assessment data obtained to make any necessary edits to the modules based on the responses collected from the spring semester. In addition to the Python coding module, a percent oxygen module where students will determine the percent oxygen in a room of their choice at home will be implemented into these courses in fall of 2021. In creating these additional modules, we hope to diversify our archives so that this module learning system can be applicable to other STEM disciplines such as biology, physics, and computer science. Ideally, these modules will also continue to be useful as supplemental instruction in in-person courses once campuses reopen. Here you can just see our references. These are the presenters we had for this presentation. We want to thank you all for attending. If you have any questions, our contact info is on the slide.